So last time we discussed a library called jQuery. jQuery, as you will recall, is a library that is written in JavaScript. It's available for you in the browser if you reference it using a script tag, right? And once you do that, you have access to two variables, dollar and jQuery. They refer to the same function, that is to say the jQuery function. If you call the jQuery function with a string that contains a CSS selector, it will return to you a jQuery object that contains within it all the elements that match the selection. We discussed three types of CSS selectors. Element tag name selectors, element name selectors, class selectors, and ID selectors. Class selectors are prefixed by a dot, ID selectors are prefixed by a hash, and tag names are simply the tag names. Easy, right? Okay, so you do that and you get back a jQuery object that has in it the elements. You can then perform operations on these elements. What's an operation you can perform on these elements? Give me an example. You can change an attribute, perhaps, right? So you can do dot adder and maybe set a title attribute. What would happen if I were to set a title attribute on a div? Say I set title to hello world. What would that do? Find the counter with the control mode. Yeah, would anyone know what that thing is called? Tool tip. Yeah, tool tip. Okay. That's right. By adding a title to an element, what you effectively get is a tooltip. That's right. What, what are some, something else that we can set on an element? What's another um, operation that we can perform on an element? We can set a value on it. That's right. So if it's an input, for example, we can do dot adder value, or in fact, there's actually a shorthand version of dot val. Uh, very good. Yeah. So you can set a value on an input. What else? We did this quite a bit last time. You can, you can what? Edit the CSS. Right, so you can edit the CSS perhaps, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you can do dot CSS, which again is a function on this object, which when you call that function with various CSS attributes, it will apply that to all the elements inside of that list, right? So if that list had, I don't know, a div, an li, and a span, if you were to do dot CSS, you know, color red, it would turn all the, all the text within those elements red. Fine, okay, good. What else can we do? Very good. We good? Okay. So yes, that's right. So we have an HTML function that will allow you to, if you call it with an argument, with text, it will set that text as the inner HTML of that element. If you call it without the text, it will return to you the, the underlying HTML as text. Um, similarly with text, there's a dot text attribute, right? Uh, where if you call that, it will take whatever text you have and set it inside, not as HTML, but as just regular text. So if it has tags in it, it will just draw the tags. It won't render it as HTML. Okay, so let's do a quick review in code of exactly these concepts, and then we'll move forward to discuss some other features that jQuery provides. So, um, if you recall, jQuery, again, can be referred to using the dollar variable. Let's suppose I want to select these two elements, li and this other li. How do I select them? How can I select them? Huh? Right, then? Li. Okay, so if I were to do console, well, why don't I just set these dot CSS color to red. You see here that the, the information or the text that's inside of both of these LIs just turned red. Good. Now suppose I only wanted this text to turn red, not the stuff inside of this one. Excellent, that's right. I can give it an ID, like hi, whatever. And then here I can do, how do I specify an ID in my CSS selector? Hashtag ID. Very nice. Excellent. Now suppose then I have another li. 
let me get rid of the IDs because, so this is not allowed by the way. The browser will let you, but never do that. Never have two elements having the same ID, okay? Just don't do that ever. So let me get rid of that. So now suppose I wanted this one and this one, but not this one. Excellent, I can add a class, like class high. I can do another class, high. And then here, dot high, very good. And that will select these two, but not this one. You guys are getting this, this is fantastic. All right, yay. Um, very good. Now here, watch this. Suppose I want to, to select this one and this one and remove it from the DOM. Remove it from the page. What do you think that function would be called? Remove, yeah, watch this. Instead of CSS, let me call dot remove. Oh, they're gone. Oof. Right? I've removed them from the, from the HTML tree, from our DOM, from our HTML thing. Okay, but now let's add something else. Suppose I wanted to create in code um, an image. How can I do that? Well, what I can do is I can open this up. In here, instead of specifying a selector, I can specify a tag like image. And then I can do, for example, dot adder source, which is an attribute of an image. And then we're about to put in like a reference to a puppy. Hang on. So let's do puppy. Uh, that's a cute one. Uh, copy link address. I think that should work. Let me double check. No, no, that's not it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. View image. Copy image address, here we go. Okay, so then we go back to here and we put that in there. Okay, so this will create a, a, a jQuery element that has all of this information. How come I don't see it in my HTML page? Exactly, just because you've created an element doesn't mean that it exists in our tree. Right? So we have to add it to our tree somewhere. So why don't I, for example, add it to this guy? Well, so first of all, I need to not remove him. <laughs> um, but yeah, suppose I wanted to just add it to this element here. Underneath li, how do I do that? Exactly, I first need to select li, right? So let me select li by, say, an ID of, I don't know, foo dollar uh, hashtag foo. Okay, so this now gives me access to this element. I can then do dot append image. Uh, okay, so there's a notion of append and prepend. So watch. Watch, 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 watch. Div. Okay, so you can see that an li can have multiple children underneath it, right? This has all of these things underneath. Yes? You see that. That's why we call it a tree, by the way, because it's a parent-children relationship. Okay, now if I were to append an image, it would go at the end of the list. It would go here. If I were to prepend, it would go here. Make sense? So right now I'm appending, which means we should see, yep, yay, 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 and then the image. And there it is. Uh, ah, can you stick it like, I don't know, there? You can, there's a function call for it. I just can't remember, it's, I can't remember what the, hang on. Here we go. Insert at, I think is what it's called. One second. Da, 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 da. Insert. 
Interesting. Hang on. So, ah, so what you can do is you can select like the, the nth element, like the second element or the third element, and then do after. After means put it after, or there's also a before, so you can put it before. Make sense? All right. Um, so Text, hey, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. So what, you're saying you want to put it here or you want to put it after an element? After uh, y. Uh, oh, you want to put it right here? You would, okay. Oh, you want to put it here? Okay, no, look. So we have tags and then we have text, text like this. Text is considered to be a single element. Okay, it's called a text node. Right? You can't just inject things into the text node. You have to break it up into two separate text nodes and then put it in between. Right? So that's a very much more involved operation. You could also do this. We could select high. Hang on. So let's select um, h1, sorry. And then do .html on it where we say yay. And then just before the second yay, we put an image, image source. And then we take this here, hang on, there. Now let's not do this and let's not do this. So what you should see now is YA image and then yeah, Y, which is kind of what you were looking for, right? Okay. If we don't have anything in the HTML, how can we like assign an image? How can you? Okay, so, okay, fair enough. So he's saying, suppose you had this situation. Wait, 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 wait. That. Right, so you're saying, how do we start adding things to something like this, which has nothing inside? Is that? Right, so remember that the HTML, the structure of the HTML always has like a body, right? You know a body? You guys know what a body is in HTML? Okay, so what you can do is say, hang on, let me bring this back. You can append it to body. Wait one sec, let me get rid of this guy. And let me append it to body. There it is. Make sense? So even if you don't have anything specific, you can always just attach it to the body. Yes, sir? Yes? How can you understand which image to show? Um, maybe using if statements? I, I'm not sure what you mean. So, okay, suppose. Yeah. Yes. Sure, okay, so let's. So, a list of images would imply maybe an array. So, let's have an array, images, and then maybe let's do a for loop. Uh, let i be 0, i is less than 10, i++. plus plus. Now, for each one, let's do images i and put into it a puppy. Hang on. Okay, and let's have this value here. Where is it? Eight, have that be I. Okay, what have I just done? Exactly, I created 10 images and added them to a list, to my array, if you will. Fair? Does anyone see that? Okay, now the question was, suppose I wanted to add, say, the eighth image. Right, was your question? Okay, so I do um, body dot append images. Eighth would be seven index, right? I don't, yeah, there it is. Oh, look. Aw, oh, that's a different puppy. Okay, I think at eighth is, is when we get this one. Aw, oh, love these guys. 
Did I answer your question? John. Other questions? Are you guys kind of getting this? No. OK, no problem. Um, OK, forgetting jQuery. Do you, under, do you understand the fact that we created an array? The fact that we are looping 10 times? The fact that for each loop, each cycle, we're adding to that array some value, whatever this value is. So we could have done, does that make sense to you? OK, what would be the result of this of just until here? Really? What would be at the ninth index? One. What would be at the second index? Exactly. Is that clear? OK. Now, separate from this, separate from what we just discussed, we talked about how in jQuery, if you just call j wait, hang on. Don't worry about all that code. If you just do call jQuery with an element like span, it will create a span for you. Fair enough. I can then modify a span to do .html, yay, for example, which will put yay inside of the span and give me back the span. Still with me? I can then do, let's say, select body, which is the name of the element, .append span. What would that do? Exactly. It will attach this span to the body, and I will see on my screen, yay. Yes? That's clear. OK, so all we're doing here is instead of making a span, we're making an image, and then we're adding an attribute of source, which references this long URL, which is a reference to a dog. What is the operation of span? Of what? Span? It's not an operation. It's a tag name, just like a div. What's the difference between a div and a span? Is that your question? OK, div is a block. It takes up the entire line. So anything you put after it goes to the next line. A span is not block scope. It's inline. Sorry, not, not scope. Mm. Block, I forgot what that's. One is a block, so it takes up the entire line. That's a div. A span only takes up as much as it needs to, and no more. OK? This is just basic HTML. Hopefully, some of you know this. OK. Um, so now that you understand that we can create an image, all I'm doing is putting that image as a value in the array. Still with me? You sure? You were saying no before, but you understand now. Yes? I was putting a 1 before. Now I'm putting in this image into the array. So at the end, at, here, at this point, I have a list of images. Yes? So here's the nuance. In the URL, I concatenated with this one number. And it just so happens that the way Google has the URLs is the number increments and has different puppies. OK, then all I did was I referenced one of these images and I appended it to body, which is why I got this little guy. Yes? Still with me? OK, so let's keep going. So we talked about this, that we can create HTML, new HTML, just by putting the HTML into the jQuery call. It returns to us that element, which we can then append and get something like this. We could create something much more complex. We could do more uh, HTML. We could do, let's have this be an H1, and have this be really big, and this be smaller. There you go. So I made all this HTML, put it into this element, that's a let, and then appended it to body, which is why I get that. So you guys can see what this looks like. Hang on, let me inspect. Wait, wait for it. Hang on, let me. OK, so look, my body, this body, not this body, has in it my script code, right? And then I appended, right, which means I added to the end this and this, which is why you get h1 and h3. Do you see how that is the outcome of doing this? To the body, we appended this stuff, which is why we get that. 
Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Are you sure? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, Jen. OK, good. Excellent. All right. Good, so we know how to create new elements. OK. What about removing elements? So we talked about this. We talked about a function call called remove, right? So here I can, so look, there's, I have some text here. If we lose Terud Forest, we are in, and then there's a span with lots of trouble. Now what I can do is I can select that span and remove it. What the hell? Hang on. Span. OK, here we go. If we lose Terud Forest, we're in trouble. What happened to the span? This one. I removed it. So think about it. What I'm trying to show you is this. You have your HTML structure. You can find anything in that HTML structure. You can modify anything in that HTML structure. You can remove things from that structure. And you can add things to that structure. That means you have everything you need. If you can edit what's there, you can add to it or you can remove from it. You have everything you need in order to manipulate the HTML structure. Yes? You guys kind of see that? OK. So you can remove things from the DOM by remove. You can add things to the DOM by append, prepend, and a few other mechanisms. And you can modify things by performing operations like HTML, CSS, etc. Right? You can change the attribute by calling the adder function. You can change the CSS by calling the CSS function, etc. Is that clear? Good. Let's keep going. This is the good stuff. This is where things finally, all of this stuff that we've been learning in jQuery is finally going to make sense to you once we understand events. Dot, 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 dot. Events. Events. So what is an event? Well, let me describe it to you this way. You are on the third floor here at AUA, just hanging out in that lounge area where you guys hang out with the couches. And you're saying, I want to know whenever Ruben says the word hi. Bear with me. So you need to be notified of the fact that I, down here, said the word hi, right? So you ask someone, maybe in the class, some poor soul, to whenever they hear me say the word hi, to run up upstairs and say, tell you, hey, Rube just said hi. And you go, oh, mm, OK. Now you know. OK, I'll say this one more time just so it's clear. I'm down here, you're up there. You want to know when I say hi, right? You don't have a camera or anything like that. So what you do is you talk to another student. You say, hey, go to the class, listen to Ruben. When Ruben says the word hi, get up here and tell me. So I say hi, that's to And then it says, Ruben said hi. Oh, OK. What if the time he's going up and down, you say one more time? Let's just say he's really fast. Good question, by the way. That's a, that's a very. You can think of it that way. So, another way, so he's sending a notification, right? He's notifying the student upstairs that I, down here, did something that that person was interested in, right? OK. So, think of that notification going up as an event, OK? So, some vocabulary. That person upstairs is registering for an event. They want to be notified when I say hi. OK? So they are registering for an event. When an event happens, that is to say I say hi, an event is propagated, that is to say goes up the stairs, and the person registered for that event is notified. You can think of it that way. Sure, yeah, I care whether this person you know, is online. And when they come online, maybe it turns green, or I don't know, which notification are you talking about? 
Oh, right, they liked so the fact that I had chicken for breakfast or something. Okay, yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, right, so fine. That's, that's kind of a notification, yeah. But, don't, but in this case, just think of you care about some event. You can register for that event. And when that event happens, you are notified of that fact. Is that clear, what I just explained? Okay, you can do the same thing in the browser. This is what I mean. Let's get rid of all this complicated code. And let's just say we have a div. Here it is, a div that says goodbye. Ah, oh, not goodbye, say hello. Yeah. Okay. We want to know when my mouse, see I'm moving my mouse around? I want to know when the mouse goes in. So the di div, hang on, let me style it. Let me style the div, give it a border of one pixel red solid. Okay, so this whole thing is the div in question. I want to know that when the mouse goes over that div or it goes into that div, see the, this is the border, right? When it goes in, I want to know. I also want to know when the mouse goes out of the div. Huh? Sure, we can try that, okay. So first of all, we have to know the name of the event, right? I have to somehow tell the browser, tell me when the mouse enters. First thing I have to say is when the mouse enters where? I might have lots of different elements, right? I have to tell jQuery, tell me when the browser enters this specific element. So the first thing I have to do is select that element. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so let me select that element. Okay, and now let me register for an event. The way you register for an event is by calling on. On is a function, okay? You then give on the name of the event that you want to be notified of when that happens on this div. Mouse, I think there's a mouse enter event, hang on. Hang on, mouse over, mouse, mouse out, mouse enter. Let's do this one. I want to know when the mouse goes in and when the mouse goes out. So we do mouse enter. Okay, now, when I'm notified of this, I want to run some code, right? I want to react to, to this event. So the second argument is a function, which takes an event object, which we'll discuss later. Voila. So now let me do, I don't know, console.log mouse entered. Yay. Okay. So now if I enter this, ready, 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 ready. Oh. Watch. I take it out. Let me enter again. Ready, 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 ready. Oh. Ready, 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 ready. Bye. Ready, ready, ready. Okay, so instead of doing console.log, let's do something cool. Why don't we, so first of all, save a reference. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. So let's, wait, wait, listen, listen. Let's save a reference to this element, right? Now I want to, whenever the mouse enters, do div dot, I want to change the background color to red. What do I do? Both work. You can do this too. Oh yeah. Okay, now it's just stuck in red, right? Because you understand why. So let me change it again, and so you can see it one more time. Ready? Mouse enters, 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 boom! Right? Okay, now, now, let's add an event to know when the mouse leaves, so we can flip it back. Right? Okay, so let's do another one, div.on. Remember that this div is now referencing the result of this guy, right? So I can do div.on, mouse, leave, shion, e. 
Okay, now when it leaves, let's do div.css background color, let's say white. So we enter, leave, enter, leave, enter, leave. Bum, 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 bum. You guys starting to get why this might be important? Cool, yes. Without what? You can. Okay, so listen. Everything that jQuery does, pretty much everything, at least the stuff having to do with finding things in the DOM, manipulating the DOM, the DOM being the HTML tree, and some of the other things we'll see later, are actually available natively. That is to say, without jQuery, there are other functions you can use that the browser gives you that you can then do all of this with. The problem is that the, that API, API is a fancy way of saying the functions that are given to you, is really complicated and not very easy to use. Which is why most people just use jQuery because it gives you a very easy way to access and talk to the HTML. So while yes, you can do it, using jQuery just makes it a lot easier. It's that simple. Um, other questions so far? Yeah, so if what is true? If the value of that div dot home has been returned with mouse enter. So it return okay. So watch this. So another thing you can do, listen, 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 is instead of having like a whole bunch of on on things on the same thing, you can add multiple events like mouse enter, mouse leave on just one of them. Hang on, let me cut this out. Okay, you see this argument that you get, this object? It has a type. And you can do if e.type is mouse enter, then you can assume you got this event. Else, you know that you got the other event. E, e is just an object. You can call it bogos. This is just a variable name. That doesn't have, how do, what do you mean two events at the same time? You, you will get them in, in, you know, you don't get them. If two events do happen at the same time, theoretically, you, they come in order. They, there's no way it can happen literally. Even if it happens at the same time, you will get it one at a time. Make sense? Um, Okay, so see here how I did on one on, I said I want to know when mouse enter and when mouse leave, right? So when, I, when I'm notified, how do I know what happened? Did mouse enter or did mouse leave? Which is it? It so happens that this object has a type on it that references the name of the event that happened. Yes? No? Okay, all right. You want to know whether I said hi, if I say hi, and you also want to know if I say bye. The student rums up and says, it happened. What happened? What happened? You have to be able to discriminate, right, between the hi event and the bye event, right? So you would ask the student, okay, it happened. Which happened? And they say, oh, he said hi. That, oh, he said hi, is the type. Ah, so it's stored in the type. Exactly. The type will tell you the event that happened. So the function will get called if any, any of these events happen. The type will tell you which event happened. Make sense? Yes? Sort of? OK. OK, OK, good. So in the same way that we have an on function, it makes sense that we have an off function. If on registers an event listener so that when an event happens, I know about it, what does off do? It unregisters the listener. 
So let's do this. Let's add a button. Look. So let's do, I don't know, button. Let's select that button. I want to know when that button is clicked. See this button? Click me. There it is. I want to know when that button is clicked. How? How? What do I write? Good. I have to select the button. So I'm saying the button on click. Very good. Which takes an event. Good. Console.log clicked. OK, so now if I click the button, right? Good? OK, so when this button is clicked, I want to turn off these events. Watch this. Div.off these guys. OK, so right now, this works. Yes? I click, done. That's the same thing as you saying to that person who runs up and down, don't drop an, um, up and down anymore. I don't care anymore. And then they stop. Is that clear? OK. Good. So you know how to register events. Yes. Ah, OK, very good question. He wants, he's saying, suppose I wanted to click once on registers, click again, re-registers. Then click again, unregisters, click again, re-registers. What can I do? Right, how do I toggle the event? Why don't we take all of, save this, hang on, create a function, const uh, add event, or register event, I should say, register. Yeah, 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 hang on. OK. What will happen if I call register? What will happen if I call register? It will register an event, right? OK. So then here, oh, let's also do an unregister. So if you call this, it registers. You call this, it unregisters. Yes? You see how that's true? OK, so let's initially, at the beginning, register. Then when the button is clicked, let's have maybe a let is registered dirt be false. But then, hang on, let's put that at the very top. And when it becomes registered, let's flip that to true. When it's unregistered, let's flip that to false. And then here we simply say if is registered, if it's already registered, what do we do? Else, else, we register. We call this guy, ah, register. OK, so we start off with everything working. We click, not working. We click, working. We click, not working. We click, working. Yay. Yay. Does that make sense? Yes? We're getting this? Oh, you. Which part? OK, all right, all right. From the beginning. Look, 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 look. Let's do it. Not from the beginning. Which part? Ah, OK, look. What does this do? It selects the button, yes? 
That's this button here. On that button, we say on. That is to say, we want to know when the click event happens. The click event is what happens when you go with the mouse. When that happens, call this function. Is that clear? OK. Then we're saying, let's have a variable called isRegistered, which initially is set to false. Whenever we call register, register, in addition to actually doing the registration, will set that variable to true. OK, false, true. It's just, so a Boolean value means you have one of two values, either yes or no, true or false. In this case, I'm saying this can have, initially it's with false, I change it to true. And then later, when I unregister, I change it back to false. So if the last thing that was called was this, the value of is registered would be false. If the last thing that was called was this, the value of is registered would be true. Right? You see how that's true? OK. So all we're saying is when the button is clicked, we're saying is, is registered true. If it is, it's registered, so let's do the opposite. Let's unregister. So we call the unregister function. Else, we register. Ta-da! Yes? It's making sense. OK. So now you can imagine, let's do something more interesting. Instead of just setting the background, why don't we set the, si the width? Yeah, why not? Or the height. Oh, let's do the height. Let's do uh, div.css height of, I don't know, 300 pixels. So that's if it's there. Let's have it, that go back to, I don't know, 100 pixels. Whoa, crazy. But you guys see how for a lot of this, it's useful if you know CSS and HTML. Because if you know what you can do with CSS, then you can programmatically change the CSS and the HTML. Make sense? So if you didn't do homework one or whatever it was, the homework zero, go back in Code Academy and relearn HTML and CSS. It's going to be very important moving forward. Um, OK, I think we're done with this one. You guys get events, yes? OK, now you, can, you're, you might be wondering, well, what events can I listen to? You can get a list of events, like click, key down, key, you know, key press, whatever, resize. There are a whole bunch of these. Um, just Google. DOM events. You get a list, and you can register to those events. That's it. No, God, no. I don't remember them all. No. Google. How about? Yandex? OK. Does this do animate? Ah, OK. Whoa. 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 I can do this all day. OK. How does that work? Well, well, we'll talk about how to actually write the animation code yourself. But it turns out that jQuery gives you a eh, jQuery gives you a function called animate, which does the actual animation for you. But animate what? How does jQuery know what to animate? Well, it knows what to animate because you call your function on the thing that you want to animate. Make sense? So in this case, we're selecting div and we're doing an animation, yes? Well, suppose it's selected, not one, but three divs. What would happen now? All three animate. OK, hang on, let me do something like
Make sense? It applies the animation on all the elements that it selects. How many elements does this select? This one, this one, and this one, which is why we get three that animate. Clear? Y yes. Okay, all right, let's go through the arguments, yes. Okay, so animate is the function that you call. You give it the CSS that you want to end up with. Okay, so you're saying eventually go to the CSS. And you're saying 500 is the milliseconds. It's the amount of time the animation takes to get to that final destination. So if I wanted the animation to happen faster, let's do 50 milliseconds. Watch this. That was very fast, right? Let's have it be super slow. Let's have it be one second. That's one second, right? Let's have it take five seconds. Ready? Is that clear? What do you think this last thing does? Why do I have this last function? It gets called when the animation completes. At the end of the animation, it calls this function to say animation done. Make sense? Ah, good question. Instead of this, <laughs> forget it. I don't want to tell you what this is. It's that. Do you understand this code? Yes? What did I change? So this div that I selected, which remember is the jQuery object that has inside three actual divs, I set it to, an, to a variable. And then on that variable, once the animation completes, I set HTML, the inner HTML, to all done. Which is why, notice, wait for it, wait for it. Boom, boom, boom. Make sense? OK. We can also do something like div dot, um, yeah. yeah, maybe that's enough. Whatever. Yeah, CSS. Change the background color to blue. Yeah, we can do that. You're right. We can do CSS background to, so we can start. Let's not do five seconds. That takes too long. Let's do one second. <laughs> That's an interesting homework assignment. <laughs> traffic light. Okay, don't worry. It's going to be way harder than a traffic light. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this? It's, it's because it's in focus. Watch. When you click on it, it becomes in focus. When you click away, see how it's gone? The browser renders things in focus with like a weird. Um, Can we animate the transition from red to blue? Interesting. Let's do that. So let's start off with red. And here instead, let's do. So let's not have the, the callback function. Let's see what that happens. Nope. I guess you can't background. Hang on. No, 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 it, it works, but it's not doing the animation of the color. I thought there might have been a way, but maybe there's not. You experiment at home and then come back and tell me. Uh, other questions? Okay. This is where things get kind of cool. You might wonder, what is all this? Okay, you guys know what Flickr is, right? Flickr. It's a photo thing. It used to be popular when you were like two years old. No. <laughs> All right, so look, 
Here I'm, I'm searching for things that have tags called Arminium. Let me search for, give me something else to search for. Terut? Is that what you said? AUA. Uh, AUA is American University of Armenia. How about that? Hang on. Wait, am I not connected? Oh, wait, what's this? Oh, there's AUA, look. Who are these people? Hang on. It gave us four pictures. Flickr has four pictures tagged by a American University of Armenia. Interesting. Okay, give me another one. One more. Okay, something that, oh my god, really? Can you guys just give me like Tokyo or something? <laughs> Okay, so here it gave me Tokyo, right? This is the results of Tokyo of searching for Tokyo. Wait, blah blah blah. Wait. Hang on, let me let me change this. First. Uh -huh. All right. Okay, so. Remembering back to what we to our previous discussions, how do you think? What do you think is happening? Where am I getting these images? How am I rendering them on the screen? Feel free to have a look at the code. Okay, so I'm sending some kind of a message. First question, where am I sending the message to? That. That. It's what is the protocol that's being used to communicate with that server? HTTP colon slash, see that? That means HTTP. What is the name of the server, not the address, the name, the domain name of the server I'm talking to? Flickr well, API Flickr.com, it resolves to Flickr.com. So the first thing that happens for me to talk to Flickr.com is I have to know the address of Flickr.com, right? How do I find out the address of Flickr.com? Send a GET request. Right, I send a request to a DNS server saying, here's the name, Flickr.com, give me the address. It gives me an address which is like a number, dot, number, dot, number, dot, number. It's a 32-bit number, yes? I then, I as in my browser, creates a packet, a message if you will, that says send this message to this entity, to this target. Remember that the HTTP protocol has various actions. It has post, which is when I want to send information. It has put, when I want to update, delete, when I want to remove something. What do I want to do in this case? I want to get something, hence the type of the operation is a get. So you understand the second thing. The third thing is the data type. What is the format? What is the, task, the kind of thing that I want to get back? I want to get back JSON. And so that's what I see there. Data is the parameters that I'm sending to the server. I'm saying, hey server, you, please give me things that have tags of Tokyo. The tag mode is any, I don't know what that means, but it's things that the server understands. And the format that I want the response in is to be JSON. I also tell them. And then I give it a success function. When do you think will that function get called? Exactly. So the, the request goes out. The response comes back and then calls success. Make sense? When would error get called? 
Right, so suppose the server is down, or I write an incorrect address in the URL, or whatever. I won't get a response, so instead I will get an error, so the second function gets called. 404 means not found, yes. Yeah. Is that clear? So let's talk about the actual code, what's actually happening here. So I send off this request, I get back success with data, the data itself is an object. So remember that the server gives me back JSON, but then that JSON is already parsed out into an object and then given to me as a callback. So this is the object that the server sent me. I'll say this again. The server sends JSON. What is JSON? JavaScript object notation. In other words, it's a serialized JavaScript object. When jQuery gets that, it turns it, it does json.parse, turns it into an object, and then gives it to me here. With me? Once I get that, data is an object that has an array attached to it called items. Let me make this simpler. Let me get rid of this. For let, ah, sorry, hang on, let me, syntax error, okay. Let i be zero, i is less than data dot items dot length, i plus plus. So this will iterate over all the items that the server sent me. And then for each of those items, I want to append to the body an image. image tag, which is item, there you go, let me get rid of this. There. Does everyone understand what's happening here? Okay, what does this do? Selects a body, what does this do? It attaches to the end of the list in underneath the body, right? Okay. Attaches what? Well, the output of whatever this is. And what is that? What does that do? What happens if you give jQuery not a selector, but HTML? What does it do? Jesus Christ. Yeah. Everyone okay? All right. Good. Uh, what will this do? Yeah, it will think, okay, let's divide it up. Let This here will return a jQuery object inside of which exists a tag called image with this source. In other words, it will create this element for me wrap it with a jQuery object and return it, putting it into this here. I can then append that to the DOM, append that to the body. There. Is this making sense to you guys? Okay, now you might be wondering why am I not getting anything down here? Because why? Yes. Very good question. Watch this. Okay. So have a look at data. Hang on, let me zoom in. So look at data. When you open data, what does it have inside? A whole bunch of stuff that Flickr sent me, right? Some information about who generated it, it's Flickr, some, when was the last time the list was modified, just stuff. And then it has this items array, right? Each items array is an object. Each of those objects has a bunch of stuff. Uh, what are we using? We're using medium, that's this. And then M has a reference to an image. So 
so the things in that array are objects. See, this array has a whole bunch of objects. Each object, every object, has a media object inside of it, which then has an M attribute that references the actual image URL. Which is why here we do items i.media.m. Make sense? Where i, of course, is the index. Make sense? Now here's a question. This does not work. Why? What did I do wrong here? I did items, dot, items i. Why isn't it working? Can anyone figure it out? Here's the hint. Right. Items is attached to data. Now I get images. See? If I wanted to keep items separate, I could have done this. I could have done const items, data.items, eh, items, items. Uh -huh. And then now I could have done this. Make sense? Yes. Items, wait, oh, gosh. Say again. Yes. They're not functions. No, no, no. These, these are, so data is an, look. I get information from the server. The server gives me back an object serialized as a string that then gets deserialized and I get it just as an object. That object has a whole bunch of stuff inside. What you do when you get that object is you open it up and you see the structure. Once you understand the structure, you then put your code so it fits that structure, and your code then reads that structure and puts it on the screen. Okay, good question. So Twitter, exactly for that reason, always sends the same structure to you. Because if it didn't, exactly, how would you ever know? If every time it sent it, it sent it in a different way, right? It would be chaos. Absolutely right. So exactly for that reason, servers, when they send responses, tend to send them in the same way so that they're predictable. Okay? Other questions? Okay. So remember how we also wrote server code that was serving out the puppy? It would read the puppy from the file system and send it back? So now you know, you can imagine how the Flickr side works, right? I make a request for an image. Flickr then sends me back a reference first to an image, and then when I say go get me the file, it then sends the file and I put it on the screen. So it's all connected. It's all connected. It's all coming together. Okay. Actually, we don't need this one. Hang on. Oh, we have, what, three minutes? Uh, I don't want to talk about this yet. Hang on. Okay. All right. Was all this really easy for you? No. Right. Good question. Okay. Yeah, so we're almost done, so I'll just talk. All right, listen. What you guys have probably already noticed is that everything that we're doing is easy. Everything that we do is easy. What's complicated is when you combine them together, right? This is how any system works, right? The parts, the individual pieces tend to be very simple and then they combine together to produce complexity. You as engineers will often build really big complicated things, but you will build them in small parts. And then you will start putting them together a little bit at a time to get more and more complicated things. We've discussed this quite a bit. As far as learning, as far as trying to understand how this stuff works and how it fits together, there is really no alternative than to just do it. This is why I think the projects that you will hopefully begin soon, and we'll discuss that moving forward, will give you the opportunity to really explore and try to figure out different ways that you can fit these things together. My hope is that many of you will eventually, in not too long of a time, understand that you can write server code, understand that you can write client code, understand that from the client you can make requests to get information from the server, 
understand that you can use jQuery to then modify the HTML, and then pretty soon we'll discuss how you can then also get information from the client and send it, upload it, to the server. Once you can do this, you have all the core information to build anything. Do you see how that makes sense? A lot of what you see on the web, a lot of the really complicated websites are using this same exact really basic blocks. Except they've put them together enough that they've gotten a really complicated thing. But the underlying pieces are the same and they're very simple. And once you learn them, you can do the same. Cool? Yes? No? Maybe? I don't know. All right. Let's take a photo and go home.